The weather authority and exact track 4D. Cutting edge technology, giving you the most accurate forecast down to your street. Don't even know if you're really going to need your sunglasses out there at the airport today. No, you might not over there, but the beach is still looking pretty good. So there, the Texas Trio, ZZ Top, they've always said, go and get yourself some cheap sunglasses. Right. <laughs> Summertime was... after all, and it's a good tune. All right, let's get you started. We are tracking those showers and storms, little clusters here moving into Clay and St. John's County. That southwest sea breeze got an early head start, and with it, Showers and thunderstorms, some locally heavy, as evidence from our flood advisory in uh, Columbia County. And you can see that the showers and the thunderstorms, any of the heavy stuff, has left the area. Just a little light rain continues, so that might expire a little bit early there at 6.30. Take you back in and around the Clay County area. Here we are as we're still watching these in and around Argyle Forest. And I'll show you where we're tracking them the way that we are. I'll put this into motion. They're still slowly lifting from the south to the north as they they continue that little bit of an easterly track. So what we can do here, uh, kind of track it two ways, but we'll reach over just to the north of these where a couple lightning strikes are popping and we'll lean them just a little bit off to the northeast as they'll continue up around fifth tone here. Uh, it's going to give you about 19 minutes, Caleb, Normandy, and then skirting along the river here over towards Cedar Hills, about a 20 minute window. Not the fastest of storms by any means, and we can do the same thing. Let me grab my tracker tool, we'll go around Lake Asbury, lift those up. So we are heading over toward Fleming Island here, Doctors Inlet, as we'll see those coming up around Peoria and Doctors Inlet at about a 20 minute window and our thunderstorm starting to liven up here. This is going to offer some soaking rain if you're leaving the St. John's County side and heading over toward the uh, Shands Bridge. Those will continue to lift to the north up around Hibernia and Rivertown in about a 20, 28 minute window. And we've got a pretty good cluster here as we're watching these as we move through West Tacoy up through Piccolata. And here's where they're splitting the river. Now, so we've got parts of Clay and St. John's County. And we'll bring up our world golf cam here. We'll be watching that through the five o'clock as it looks like what we're seeing here between Molasses Junction and along that 207 route from Elkton into Vermont Heights will still be a player as we get into our five o'clock hour and our thunderstorm cluster that we had here from Restaurant Row all the way up through Palm Coast Parkway much lighter and a few more storms. I don't want to ignore you here along Highway uh, US 1, but if you're trying to get yourself around, let me grab my tracker tool here from Callahan up and around the Hilliard and Folkston area. We will see more of those storms as they'll continue to lift up around Anders, Balone, and into the Colerain area. All right, so from there, the rainfall total so far, and like I was saying, we saw heavy stuff, but just outside of our area, almost three inches of rain across that area as the thunderstorm was tapering off, three quarters of an inch, and here we're still adding with an inch and growing from parts of Putnam or parts of a uh, flagler rather and into southern St. John's County. All right, just updated the web update here for News for Jax. If you're keeping up with the tropics, we've got something trying to come together, question mark, in the Bay of Campeche, a 20 and a 30 percent. Now let me show you what the models think of this whole thing and I'll broaden the view to show you where chances are likely and they're not likely here. That 20 to 30 percent wind shear, it's going to spend two days over the Yucatan, gets into the Bay of Campeche half of it is over land and then the next day it's back into mainland Mexico. Not much chance to form. Meanwhile, here in the Pacific, this is what could become and is a lot more likely now to become flossy. And you can see that the Euro and yellow and even the GFS are showing closed circulation. And that would at least build what could be uh, the tropical activity in the Gulf of in, um, uh, the Pacific. Meanwhile, in the Mexic in the um, Gulf, Southern Gulf, the Bay of Campeche and in the Caribbean, it looks like that is going to be the only thing, at least right now, that we're watching. So we'll take you out to World Golf Village. Cloudy skies. You can see some of the storminess that's off in the distance there with some of the rain coming through as our temperatures put us into the 80s here around Jacksonville. All right, the nanometer not looking too good this weekend. We'll be doing the same thing that we're doing today. So we'll leave it like your Friday forecast and make it a nine here as we'll be dodging those afternoon showers and storms. Some folks that might be heading out even for the game here tonight. Uh, the first pitch and then beyond chances will be coming down over the weekend depending on the Saturday Sunday game. It'll be more of the same as we'll see those chances wrapping up after we get to two o'clock in the afternoon spiking during the early evening and then coming back down again. And Tarek, that unsettled pattern with those near seasonal temperatures continues next week. All right, Richard, thanks.